Welcome to the Protectors. Excellent guest today. And I was just busting him. I said that he was one of the premier ruck backpack companies out there, but they are the premier. I have Jason McCarthy here from Go Ruck. Uh, That's better, man. That's better. Much better, much better. I was waiting for a a dagger to come through the screen and hit me right in the head. But uh, (laughs) it's great to have you on, man. And it's great to have you on this week, the week of 9-11, just because most of your story originates post 9-11. Most of the, you know, the guts of your story. And I'm sure we're going to hear about that. And we're also going to hear about the book coming out and a bunch of other topics that I really want to touch on. So let's get right into it. Jason, where were you born? <laughs> I was born in Kettering, Ohio, birthplace of aviation, where the Wright brothers are from. <laughs> very nice very nice everyone gives ohio shit man but i'm, I'm gonna give it back uh, it's it's awesome you know it's like choose your parents wisely and grow up in ohio that, that's mm-hmm. that's a great way to do it you know it's, driving- also, it's also one of the wright brothers quote it's one of their <laughs> quotes so I'm, I'm stealing it <laughs> you're gonna keep that one now nobody knows that quote except yep. you so we're gonna we're gonna keep it there hey you know we're driving through ohio though, man you know there are plenty of awesome little neighborhoods like on the lake and stuff like that. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Like my dad's house too. I mean, well, you, you stop through there, man, drink some beer in his garage with him. I'll stop talk by, about, you know, do, do some work on his Harley or, you know, we take, could take, talk the, take the mower around the, around the, the soybean field. It's, it's, it's awesome times. Jason, the next time I go through Ohio, I'm going to stop by your dad's house and I'm going to mow the lawn. I'm not just going to go awesome. around the field. I'm going to make, I, and I'm, I'm going to edge it too. Okay. I'm not one of these guys that just going to roll up and, you know, three minutes later, I, I, I mowed a lawn. It's got to be edge. It's going to be clean. It's going to look good. Um, he's going to give me a couple beers. I'm going to get the real backstory on, on your, your childhood and how you became to start your own big business. Not even a small business anymore, man. But uh, yeah, brother, um, grow up Ohio, nine 11 happens. And then what you're like, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm not yeah, just so going to do it. I, yeah. you know, I, I completely bounced around a little bit. My parents got separated when I was really young. So I moved down to the University of Florida with okay. mom. She was playing tennis when I was three. So, um, you know, I kind of grew up always going back to Ohio, but bouncing around other places. And then, you know, then I, you know, I grew up with playing tennis and was having kind of a, a normal life, maybe, maybe a little too normal. Wasn't super happy about it. And I graduated, um, you know what? Like, I just always was looking for more, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and graduating, sense. graduated college in, in 2001 and really didn't know what I was going to be doing with, with my life. So decided, uh, you know, bum around a little bit and travel a little bit. And then the, the towers fell in, in that September. And so that just was kind of clarity, right? I mean, I, I knew what I needed to do. I needed to serve. And so it's, it's very much the, the fulcrum point in my life, the, the pivot in my life of, I, I knew that I needed to serve and, and I knew, I almost knew at that point how I needed to do it. It just, that, that part took a little bit, took a little time to figure out exactly how, but, but yeah, that was, that was a, a big time. Now, did you know much about the military, specifically the army before that? No, no, not at all. I, I didn't know. I didn't know anybody. I'd never talked to anybody that I can think of about their army service. My uncle was a helicopter pilot in the Navy, but I didn't, I didn't see him very much. And, you know, the, the Navy is always a little bit worse. Oops. I mean, different than, than the army. Right. <laughs> um, no. So it was just one of those, you know, look, you get these big moments and then you get these really big reactions. And there were, there were, you know, I'm not special in this. There were, millions of us who who wanted to do something to serve our country after that yeah 9 11 was uh really nuts for me i was an infantry officer basic course and i was literally sitting waiting to go out to the mount oset uh not oset but the mount uh for the week and that's you know urban training and man when the towers got hit we were there and we're all like 
all of us were infantry. So 99.9% of us all eventually went to war. So, you know, you go from cold war, uh, era to like, you know, it seems like overnight to this weird post nine 11 livelihood. It's just, uh, it was interesting, very interesting times. And, Glad I got to serve and it was really life changing and I wish I could have done more. Um, and I really commend everybody, specifically those who joined after nine 11, you know what you're getting yourself into. And did you join, did they have 18 x-ray back then or did you do? I was real? 18 x-ray. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So, and, you know, I've, I've heard of this actually, we, we were chatting with um, another guy, Dave Castro from CrossFit on, on our podcast a couple of weeks ago. It has, it's not out yet, but, and he was like sort of saying the same thing about you know he was in he was in that the the navy and it was before 9 11 and then you know he gave me sort of some praise about same thing you just did about well after 9 11 you knew what you were getting into and no i don't know i mean in some ways in some ways that was easy like there was just absolute clarity. I, I basically what I'm getting at is I don't think you owe me any extra praise. I mean, you you were there in the middle. Your everything shifted on a dime against you had no control. Like I, you know, this is America. I had some control. It was either serve or don't. And with you, you're already serving. It's just expectations were, hey, you know, it's like the Cold War is kind of over. Life's life's pretty good. We're living on the fat and. And then it's, it's all of a sudden, welcome to it. That, that's a big shift. And I've talked to a lot of people who have said it was, it was a really, really big shift. You know, I do give a lot of kudos to the, everybody post 9-11, as far as like, you know, the training and getting the gear that most people needed. Because, you know, the pre-9-11, there was no, it was, you're still wearing like Vietnam era boots and everything. It seemed like gear was crap. Uh, but I remember when I got deployed in 05, 06, it was just basically like going to a, a really nice sporting goods shop and handing you like five pairs of boots and uniforms and, you know, eye gear and everything. I probably just, yeah, I, I think we changed, should be thanking man. the American taxpayer right about now. I'm thanking myself, uh, the taxes <laughs> I paid and, uh, yeah, thank you taxpayers. So let's get into it. Let's get talk about, you know, you did your service and you get back. And um, how does, you know, I read your the little back brief on GORUCK and it's really cool. I like the fact that it's an actual something that's useful. It's not just like a piece of workout gear. It's something like, hey, it's a go bag. You need something that's durable, something that's going to get you through. Is that just based on your experience and experience of, you know, those that you love that have deployed overseas? Yeah, so the the first thing that I did before Go Ruck was Go Ruck at all wasn't even an idea. Was I built my wife? She was a she was a case officer in CIA serving in Abidjan, which is West Africa, in a country called Cote d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast, right? I had to look it on an, up on a map. If you don't know where it is, no no big deal. West Africa, good, good enough, right? Like French speaking West Africa, and you know she was there, and I I was visiting after my deployment to Iraq and before I would later also serve in, in West Africa. But I built her just a go bag. My, my sort of wartime senses were fresh. And that's what we did in war. I was just doing what I knew, right? I mean, you, you, you go out on Humvees. On, our missions were all in gun trucks. So we, we weren't climbing the mountains of Afghanistan. That, that wasn't us on, on this mission or on this deployment. And so we would take extra supplies, bombs, ammo, guns, radio equipment, batteries, water, T take your pick and put it in a, a rucksack and put it in the trunk of the Humvee in case your vehicle's disabled, you have to fight, stuff like that, right? And so we, we did that and that was just second nature. So kind of adapted, took some of the stuff that, that I brought with me, you know, made one for her. And it was really just that simple. And, and so, you know, then I made it for a couple other people at the embassy and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do when I was eventually going to move there in a little under a year after, after that first trip there. And she's like, oh, Jace, you should do the go ruck thing. And so it kind of meant take special forces skills, whatever, and, and teach them to others. And so that was, that was really the impetus. And, you know, I, then when it came to bag design, I mean, kind of, I, I, I built what I knew, right? I mean, I knew how to ruck. People think that log PT and all this, you know, 
this carnage that you see on Discovery Channel is is what Special Forces selection is all about. It, that's not it at all. It's it's miles with lots of weight on your back over and over and over and over. And the rucksack does the work for them a lot of times because it it starts to get into your mind and in your soul. So, you know, you just had this sort of marriage of, yes, it's rucking gear because that's what I knew. And yes, it's adaptable to to war or to, you know, war torn or to New York, because that's, those were the lives that, that's the adaptability that, that I knew. I tell you what about go ruck. Um, I'm a big fan of rucking and get some. literally get some, right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Doesn't it make you just want to strap a ruck? It like, does. Let's, it do does. This. Let's do this next time while we're rocking and we'll do it outside and the, the um, audio quality will suck but people will love it because we'll be you know so excited the about audio it. the audio quality on this end will be incredible because i'll get some all sort of mics and stuff two months ago not even two months six weeks ago i was like i had to get in shape um i got to go rock and I actually i won an auction from the green beret foundation so i had to go rock laying around and i finally used it i put some plates in there and i got out 20 pounds later, my knees aren't killing me. It's not like I'm running. When I run and, I, you know, I'm a husky kind of guy, it kills me, man. But I get to go ruck on. I go four or five miles, and it's just – it's it's so much better than any other workout I've had in the past years. And I was telling people, like, you know, I'm always telling everybody, I'm like, you got to get a ruck. You got to do it because especially people who aren't you know attuned to wanting to get up and run five ten miles a day it's building everything my posture is better my knees aren't killing me my shins aren't killing me and i've got three or four people doing it now we started the team we have team protectors out there and for the travis Mannion uh 9-11 uh, run walk ruck coming up we have six, 15, 16 people now doing it whether they're rucking it walking it or running it and i love the ruck man i i love it and I'm not just saying that because you're on the show and you're a guest, but it's like really is one of the best workouts out there. You know, that, that's really why I do what I do here, right? I mean, I, I faced a fork in the road in, in my professional life later on was, do I want to go back in into service, like overt service, or do I want to stay with GORUCK? And, you know, this is, this is a long time ago. And I, I thought that I could help people. I thought I could help inspire people to lead better, more active and connected lives like I lived in special forces. And so when I see or hear that type of feedback, I'm first off, I'm glad that that you finally picked up the ruck and put the weight in it and started to do the work because we have this rule where if, if it sits in the closet for too long, we will come to your house and take that shit back. Okay? I knew it. I knew so, it. <laughs> so there's that second off, though, is getting friends to, to do it with you. I mean, yeah. look, cynics can sit and say some, something about, you know, you know, of course I want you to go get more new people to go join you. And I, I'm like, you know, sure. That's how businesses are built. What I'm telling you is at a really deep level, I believe in that way of life where if we just got together and talked about our lives with friends, mm -hmm. sometimes you put a ruck on, Sometimes you bring a sandbag, you meet in someone's driveway, you do some squats and some presses, and then you drink a couple of beers when you're done, right? But yeah. these things, you know, really, they're really hard to sell because they're not for sale. So nobody's yeah. selling them. And, and what I'm saying is the way of life that you just described is the way of life that I lead and will lead as long as, I, as I'm breathing on this earth. And it's so simple and it just works for me. And I, and I found that it works for a lot more other people. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are struggling with transitions. There's people mm -hmm. out there who, you know, there's loneliness is just skyrocketing, especially during COVID. I mean, there's all sorts of things. And this isn't complicated. See, the thing is, is you can't just go buy it. You can't go on Amazon and say, I want to buy fulfillment. It doesn't work. No. But what you can do is go outside and call some friends and go, go put some miles in. That works. And it works every single time if you just keep keep at it. It just it it, it will you will always be better at the end than when you started. And I, that that's pretty damn great, you know. And it's not like you have to rock a lot, you know, because I you know I've been pretty sedentary for a long time. And then when I got it on, it was like do a mile or two here um, and just keep 
pushing it out. And you're going to find that it's, it comes easy. You don't have to put 100 pounds in there to start. Put 10 pounds in. Each well, week, well, increase it, whatever. Th that's because your baseline is walking. Right. Yeah. I mean, even though like you're already walking. So sure, you put the ruck on, it straightens your your posture, it gets mm -hmm. corrected, it adds a little bit of resistance, a little bit of challenge, which makes it a little bit more fun. But unlike running, running is a completely different gait, right? Yep. So, you know, you're challenging brand new muscles and, and it's it's sort of, you know, in, in putting a ton, I mean, the force load that you're putting on your body when running is like nine times your body weight. With with rucking or walking, it's 2.7. Mm -hmm. Because so you're just not beating yourself up as much, right? And and so you know you can ease yourself into it, but anybody that served in the infantry knows you can make it as miserable as you want to make it. So you know you got all those people out there who were veterans and like uh -huh. rucking sucks. It's like you're right, it does, man. When you've got a hundred pound rucksack and you got to yeah. take fighting positions at two a.m. in the morning, mm -hmm. right? And and then the cadre comes along and blows you out of the patrol base at like four exactly. or four thirty. You know, and then you got to get moving to, to the next hit or whatever. Like, yeah, that sucks, man. You know, try it with 20 or 30 pounds and go around your block with a buddy yeah, or two exactly. for an hour and come back and drink beers and tell me it sucks. <laughs> but you know what? That is embrace the suck is one of my favorite sayings because you have built so much uh, camaraderie, esprit de corps, whatever around embracing the same suck. So like everybody else that kind of does it together with you, you can say, okay, you know what? We just went, we rucked, we, we had 30, 40 pounds in there and we did 10 miles, we did five miles or whatever, but it's that common good that came out of it. Like, you're like, oh man, that high, it's almost like a runner's high, but it's different. Yeah. You get stronger too. Yeah. But like at, at a bigger, bigger picture is like, let's not keep hoping or asking for life to be easier. No. If, if all we do, if every day you, you hope. Oh man, I can, I can buy this and life's going to be easier. I can, you know, do that and life's going to be easier. Oh, it'd be just a little bit. I mean, we're back to the fight club stuff, right? Like yeah. you're the perfect pair of khakis away from a perfect life. Like, yep. no, you're not, you, you're not, it's not for sale like that. You have to earn things in life and com camaraderie is not for sale No, you know? And, and it's like, you've got, you just have to earn it. You have to get out there and embrace the suck. Absolutely. And keep embracing it. Don't just say, okay, you know what? I've done it for six months now. I've done it for five days now. I've used the go ruck. I've done this. I've worked out with my friends. Keep it going. Keep the conversations going too, because I, see. Uh, but I like this community, the go ruck community. I, I like the fact that as soon as I started rucking, I look on Facebook and there's groups everywhere and it's not, they're not excluding anybody. They're like, hey, you know what? You want to get together? You want to do this ruck? It's not going to be easy, but we're going to do it. Um, and you could join groups all over. Uh, so I do give a lot of kudos out to the, commu the Go Ruck community as well. We have 365 Go Ruck clubs around the country and the world. So there's lots of people meeting up just to whoop it on a little bit. And yeah, I mean, look, if, if you're experienced at this, you, you sort of understand how much weight you want and how long you're going to go. If it's an hour if it's two hours, you, you can make some ex expectations there. If, if you're new, it's like start with 10 or 20 pounds, man. It, this doesn't yeah. have to be like, that's the thing. I mean, you know, if, if you've got 60 pounds and you're like, this is nothing and I've got 45 and I'm sucking, right? Mm -hmm. like, we can go about the same pace maybe and maybe it'll be great, you know? Yeah, just do what you can. Um, but the Go Ruck, your career and everything else has now produced a book. <laughs> Let's talk about that because it's not easy writing a book and it's not easy getting it out there and there's a lot of editing and there's a lot of trying to get the, the story across. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So how not to start a backpack company. And the, the premise of this was, you know, the story, I, I think the story is important here. Like the, the veteran transition story that, that I went through because increasingly I see a lot of people out there and this is not exclusive by any stretch and to, to the veteran population it's it's just it's our entire universe there's a veneer over the top of everything everyone else's life is kind of perfect just check their curated social media feed and you know we start to hold ourselves to that standard and for me the the beginning of go Ruck was a complete nutter train wreck my, my life was a mess i was transitioning out of the military going through a divorce you know found myself you know, fighting with my future soon to be ex-wife over the dog. Um, then I'm in business school, thankfully. 
it was something to do some structure. So thanks again to the American taxpayer for post 9-11 GI Bill and, you know, decided not to, to do kind of a banking inter internship between my, my two years in at, at Georgetown and decided to hit the open roads and, and drove around to all 48 continuous states with Java, my dog, and kind of met people, got into adventures and, and tried to sell some gear along the way. And, you know, the plan was a terrible one for, for building a business. My, my life by the day started to burn down a little bit more. And, I, and as I kind of mentioned earlier, I wasn't completely committed to go rock. I, I wanted to kind of, you know, I was looking for a silver bullet or I was looking to just escape a little bit in, in hopes of finding whatever it is I was looking for. You know, these romantic notions that you buy into of go West young man and find yourself or whatever. Right. And, you know, in, in some ways it was, it was helpful. And in other ways, it was kind of like delaying inevitable questions that I needed to answer, but made for a, for a heck of a story. I kept a journal along the way. And that that's kind of the meat of of the book, how not to start a backpack company. And, and so, you know, and then I bookended it with a little bit of like, let me let me explain what's going on here a little bit. And then, you know, explained a little bit the 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 next steps, you know, because it ended that September of 2010 was was the Go Ruck Challenge class zero zero one. And so it kind of takes us uh, up to that. And really, I just wanted to set the record straight for the people that work at go Ruck, for the people that perceive go Ruck, for people that want to start their own company or want to do something great and it's not easy and it's and it was a mess and it was a personal mess it was a professional mess it cost me basically almost everything and and yet it was it was worth it because that's the path i needed to to go down at that time i'm really looking forward to it um so we're looking at it probably this month or next month release. Yeah, it'll be out first on our site. We we did a pre-order okay. and you know got got some got some solid response from the community and and then it's it's trickling out this month onto Amazon and and other places like that. So this is this is what I would say is kind of step one of a cadence of getting more more media, more content out there. So first book in a in a, in a series of various stories that we have to tell. I'm excited for it. And I'm definitely going to pick it up. Um, as soon as we get off this podcast, I'm going to look, I can find it on your site. It is on the site. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Now I have to give a big shout out to my friend Garrett in Paris, who is probably one of your biggest fans. Him and I went to Europe last year to Oktoberfest, did that for a couple of days. And then we hiked all over the place and he brought this big ass go ruck and he's had go rucks for the past. I don't know how many, however long you guys been going. And uh, I do have to give a shout out to Garrett and uh, he's State Department out in Paris. So, Garrett, hello. <laughs> Thanks, Garrett. That's awesome. Thanks for what you do. That's that's a nice post you got there in uh, in Paris. So <laughs> oh, <and laughs> we, better give it, we better give a shout out to his wife, Gwen, in Paris as well, working the same post. So thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And yeah, he got his uh, daughter a go rock too for school. I think she's 16 now. It's uh, it's crazy, man. It, it's taken off. I love it. I love the go rock, and I'm always going to be a big fan of it. Um, so I really appreciate everything that you're doing, and I do appreciate your service, man. Um, it does. I, I we hear that all the time as veterans, but it's not just your service. It's coming back and giving back to the community. It's not just saying, you know, your service is it's a bookmark. It's, it's somewhere in your, in your life that's made you who you are. And a lot of us that have come back from the war and everything always have to keep moving along. Like, uh, get your, go to school, write a book, start a company, um, anything. And that's something that you have to kind of get that message out there. That don't just get stagnant, find your next missions, find your next battles that you want to fight. And not all battles are like an extremist where it's like conflict find something that you want to do and find your missions yeah you got to move you got to keep moving forward man you know absolutely it's, it's just uh you know i i just if all you have is kind of the look back and, and those were the best days of your life and, and to some extent they have to be right they have to be great days in in your life but mm -hmm. at the same time 
it's like, there's so much more that you can do to give back and continue to serve. Like maybe you'll never be as cool as you were with your, you know, hundred pound beard and, and hunting the Taliban in Afghanistan or whatever, but there's so much more, you, you have more to give now. And, and that's the, that's the call. And that's the challenge. Hey, Jason, what else is going on? I heard you guys have a documentary. Yeah, so we recently released something. It's called The Standard. It's a it's a 90-minute documentary about GORUCK selection, which kind of builds this bridge between special forces assessment selection and you know exposing some of that to, to anybody who wants to come and, and see if they've got what it takes. So it's it's a 48-hour event. We've been we've been running that event for a long time. It's got about a two percent pass rate. And this is kind of the the look behind the the curtains at at an event that we ran. It was a couple of years ago now, and we got like a million live streams during the event. And we were fortunate to have a, a documentary, like a film crew. We didn't expect to make a documentary, but it it just sort of really worked out. There was some magic there, so thought that it would be uh, something that people would enjoy. So we came out with it, and you can find that everywhere now. Awesome. Hey, Jason, you and I both have a. A high affinity, high um, thoughts about the Green Beret Foundation. How are you involved with them? So I've been proudly associated with Green Beret and Green Beret Foundation in various ways since the beginning of GORUCK. You know, it was those who much is given, much is expected, and and I always wanted to give back to to GBF from how, however possible. A few years ago, I, I officially joined the the board of directors, so that's been that's been great. And you know, there's 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 a lot that needs to be done within our our community. I mean, quick quick stat is that since 9/11, 60% of all special operations casualties have been Green Berets. So, you know, when you when you add up all the other soft communities, that's only 40%, and we're at about 60. And so, you know, you, it, it's just there's a lot of need out there. The wars aren't ending, but I, I realize that, you know, it's kind of fading from consciousness a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, and, and yet here, here we still are and guys are still going into to harm's way. I mean, I lost two guys, two friends last year, guys I had been to Iraq um, with in, in 2007, and they both passed away on the same deployment in, in Afghanistan. And, you know, that stuff's hard like that, that really, that really hit home for me. And so, you know, first and foremost, just want to kind of educate people about what Green Berets are, like Army Special Forces or Green Berets. And if, if people are feeling generous, there's lots of ways to get involved. There's lots of ways to, to donate and give back. Um, it's definitely a community in need. We also don't like to ask for help. That's kind of one of those things. So, you know, you sit on the board, it's kind of your, your job is to speak for the guys who are out there still fighting and, and say, look, this is a need. I mean, we... we the community does take care of its own, but there's always more that we can do. And there are plenty of virtual opportunities. I recently participated in the uh, Steps and Flutes 5K that supported them. Um, go rucking it, of course, because I can't run worth uh, anything. But please support the Greenberry Foundation. Um, you do have um, General Tovo on there now, one of the best leaders I've ever had. He was then Colonel Tovo when I was in Iraq. And... Uh, Spoke to me, even though I was an IRR guy, spoke to me like I was just not, um, never spoke down to me and always spoke up and with, and it was just a great man. And I, he's doing a lot with the Green Brave Foundation now. He's, he's great. Are, he he's is. Great. I, I just, uh, you know, I, it's been a real honor to get to work with him about the past, he's been on about a year, I, I guess. And it's just, it's just been great. I've seen a lot of seen a lot of evolution at the Green Bray Foundation and it, the, the last few years have been have been great for that. Yeah, and I just had uh, the executive director on. I had Kevin on from uh, on. He's also a an incredible Green Beret. And I, I enjoy speaking to the Army community. It seems like for years I've with the Protectors podcast, I've had a million seals on. But it's nice to have people from the Army community on as well. So thank you, Jason. I appreciate this. Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate the time. Thanks, man.